Hey everyone, Jared at GoEngineer here, and today I'd like to share some advanced modeling techniques that I use to create this bow tie. I started with a simple feature, just a boss extrude of the general profile. Now for the curvature, the nice thing is that we can consider the traditional smooth bow tie look as a series of cross-sectional profiles that blend into each other, which means a series of sketches and a loft will do the trick. The first extrusion serves as a connection boundary for these profiles. Scrolling down, I just put a little extrusion in and some fillets to create the knotted feature. I can now introduce a helix, which will be the basis for the wrapping nature of the three parts of the tie. The dimensions of this helix can vary, but what's important is the relationship of these dimensions to downstream features. Now this helix can't be directly used for a feature, so this surface extrude uses a 3D sketch where I converted the helix into a sketch entity. Using this helix, I can create a surface extrude that now revolves the bow tie. Since I want a total of three wraps or helical components, this surface extrude is a little less than one third the pitch of the helix. Therefore, when I go to make a linear pattern to create two more instances, the spacing is only slightly larger than the length of the surface extrusion. Five thousandths to be exact. Now this next step is a basic copy body command. I need a total of three identical bodies of this base bow tie for a downstream command that's going to consume them. I've made them transparent to make the changes obvious as we move into the next features. Next is the thicken command to create a solid body as the final preparatory step. And now we can at last use the combine tool. This feature has three options but the one that is needed here is the common option. This keeps the material from two or more bodies that occupy the same space. One final note of the importance of the helix from earlier, the circle that drives the cylindrical size of the helix needs to be wide enough that the resulting helix fully envelopes the base bow tie. That way we get to keep all of the geometry from the original shape. Again, the combined command consumes the bodies that are used, so the two remaining transparent bodies allow us to see how this resulting geometry compares. Now we just rinse and repeat with the other two surfaces, and voila! Some additional features that I found helpful with handling and assembly of this tie are filleting to take off the sharp edges and cutting a portion off the back to assist with FDM 3D printing and the angle that the bow tie sits at when worn. All that's left after printing is to glue on a bow tie strap. Thanks for watching. See you next time.